All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the JLR po- Podcast Network, and uh, it is time for the uh, third episode of uh, Broken Sword: The Shadow of the Templars Walkthrough and Review. So I've, uh, like, like you just heard, I've done three of uh, two of these before, and this is the third one. And um, just like I did uh, last time, I'm gonna do a quick review before I continue with uh, the uh, walkthrough and the review of the game. Um, uh, uh, by the way, this is a, both a uh, video on YouTube, as you can see here, and then an uh, audio file on um, uh, my, my podcast sites on uh, SoundCloud, Sound, yeah, SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, iTunes, and you name it, many other uh, podcast apps and stuff like that. Um, anyways, um, a quick review of what have uh, what has happened so far. Obviously, I suggest you just watch the uh, or listen to the uh, first two episodes, but... So this is a game about a young American called uh, George Stobart who is traveling in Paris. Um, he was at a cafe when uh, all of a sudden this clown showed up with an, acco- an accordion, not a harmonica, by the way. Um, the, that thing just blew up before the uh, before it blow up, uh, blew up. Um, he uh, stole a briefcase from an old man and it entered the cafe. And uh, anyways, uh, George uh, was caught in the. Well, he survived the explosion. He was uh, kind of. Uh, I guess saved by the uh, what you might call it. What you might call it. I love saying what you might call it. I, yeah, I think it, it was under the uh, one of those huge. Is it a? Is it an umbrella on the on the board? You know, one of those. It looks like an umbrella. Never mind. Anyways, he, he it deflected the blast, so he was survived, and um, he survived, and. Um, he was like pissed off. This clown almost killed him, so he's gonna go look for the clown, and then he met this very, very sexy reporter from. Uh, I, 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 did we get the name of the newspaper? I, f- I forgot. Free. She's a freelance photojournalist, so I'm guessing she's working for freelance. She's working more, more than one magazine, I, I would think. And um, um, yeah, Nico Cola. Then uh, she knew uh, she was gonna meet that old guy who had the briefcase, and. Um, then she found out from George that it was a clown and uh, bombed the cafe and she was like, oh no, it's him again. So she knew the, who the killer was and George wanted to find out more. He helped uh, Nico find more evidence, so he went to her, her apartment, f- found the red nose of the clown, found fabric. That he, uh, yeah, found some cloth that, she sh- that he showed to Nico and Nico saw the cloth and was like, oh, that's the same as the... Uh, I have a close-up of this guy from the bomb site leaving the bomb site, and um, he was wearing a uh, uh, checkered pants, same pattern as the uh, cloth they found. And um, then they looked. Uh, the enlargement photos showed that he has a, s- a scar on his cheek, like a crescent moon, or a uh, horse shape, uh, in the shape of a horseshoe as well, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, George says horse, horseshoe, and uh, Nico says crescent moon. Anyways, um, George started uh, looking into like where he got the no, no, uh, the uh, clown's nose. Went to a uh, costume store, costume shop where um, he found out that um, ba, 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 the name of the killer was Khan. He called the tailor of the one who um, who had designed that checkered pant, uh, the checkered suit. And, um, oh yeah, by the way, at the costume set, I completely forgot to mention the the other information we got. He ordered two costumes, Bozo the Clown and Seamus the Pixie. I'm uh, pointing at my head. Think, think. Another costume? What would that indicate? Pixie on the way? Anyways, um, so, um, a small spoiler, I suppose. <laughs> but we, yeah, but we've got the information from him. And, uh, yeah, and, and then the tailor told us, yes, he, he, he's staying at the Hotel Ubu, and instead of going back to Nico to tell her, we just decided, all right, well, I decided, let's go straight to, uh, I'm talking about me and George, like, we're, like, doing this together. <laughs> I am George, I'm controlling him. Never mind. Anyways, uh, I'm all over the place. Uh, yeah, we went to the hotel where he stay- he's staying, and uh, there's a nice uh, uh, aristocrat, I suppose, a British aristocrat. Aristocrat? Yeah, why not? Lady Piermont, yeah. Um, she uh, helped us uh, get um, this really snobby clerk that wouldn't give us um, 
access to one of the hotel rooms and not and then not he didn't want to also give us access to Mer to Merl Merlin's Thomas Merlin's um, uh, uh, safe and Thomas Merlin is an uh, alias alias basically a different uh, I'm, I'm butchering that probably uh, it was a different name for uh, a different name that Khan was using at the hotel where he's staying and let's say an ambulance never mind I get really distracted by the smallest smallest and most <laughs> never mind yeah where was I um it's late here so I'm gonna go st go to sleep when this is finished uh, <laughs> um so yeah um George was finally able to get to the safe with the help of Lady Pyramon and um, after he, well yeah, there was that dr dramatic thing when he was in the killer's room and didn't find anything, he was just gonna leave and then Khan showed up and George was able to hide in the closet and uh, and Khan didn't spot him there and uh, so he was safe. Safe in the closet, I'm in the closet here. That's a South Park reference. <laughs> and um... Yeah, found his ID, found a maths book as well. And um, then, uh, yeah, got uh, to uh, his safe and he found a manuscript, a manuscript, some parcel. And um, by the way, before that, we tried to test to go outside. And the t there, are two, uh, there are two thugs outside, two mafia guys who searched George for something. And uh, now I'm going to show you why I say it. Because I'm going to first show you what happens if I just waltz out there with the manuscript. So, restore. JLR Podcast Network. Here we are. We just found the manuscript. Here it is. It was the ancient manuscript which Khan had stolen from Plantau. Which Khan had stolen from Lady Pierman, who she will not stop playing on the uh, piano. So what happens if I'm just gonna la 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 la? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk to anyone here. I don't want to bother calling anyone. I'm just gonna go outside. What would happen then? I obviously don't suggest you should do this. That's why I'm actually showing it to you. What happens? Oh, obviously they're gonna search him again. Hold it right there. Search him again, flap. See? There he goes. Search flap. F flap searches George. <gasps> Is this what you're after, Guido? Oh oh. See. That's it. I can explain everything. Well, almost everything. Almost everything. Too late. You're on your way to feed the fishes. I'm allergic to fish. <laughs> I break out in blotches when I eat tuna. Let's go. It's good to have humor when you know you're gonna die. Sometime later... Body back into the ocean! <gasps> Body back into the ocean! R.I.P. Tombstone! Game over, you're dead. So this is the first time in the game where you can die. And I remember playing this without a memory card, not ab being able to save the game, and then this happened and I was like, wait, I cannot move forward? I have to start, restart again? Ugh. And then I decided to buy my first memory card ever. I never had a memory card before this game, and then I found myself forced to have one. Anyways, um... Let's restore the JLR Podcast Network. Obviously, so now you know, do not go out there with the manuscript. And uh, it would be in it could be interesting to see what others think about what you have. For example, we can go on the phone and call Nico and say, tell her we have a manuscript now. I wonder if she would give us a hint about... Bonjour, couleur. Hi, it's George. I have the address of the killer's hotel. Mm -hmm. If you're going to pay him a visit, take care. Mm -hmm. Remember, that guy's there. a professional. Thanks. I'll be fine. Hey, I've got something awesome to show you. Oh, yeah? What is it? Ooh. A surprise. Ooh. Oh, I don't like mysteries, George. I can't tell you just now, but I'll come show you soon. Wait. Sound a little bit erotic. Ooh. <laughs> she has a really sexy voice. I kind of fell in love with Nico when I'm feeling. <laughs> Still am, kind of. All right, so he, he won't even tell her it's a manuscript, so we have no idea what her reaction would have been if he would have told her. Shall we talk to Lady Pyramid? We can examine here. Let me see. We can examine the piano. It was a magnificent old Steinway piano. Steinway? Can we play it? No, obviously not. 
Seems I like figured it. the lady at the keys wouldn't appreciate a duet with a musical illiterate like <laughs> me. <laughs> it's good to know. Let's talk to her though. About thank tell her thanks for helping once again. Hi, She's ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? Thanks so much for helping me. We can ask a little bit more about her. I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. A wild romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton chef. I must say I was disappointed with his cock van. Not at all what I was expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. Until last night. So she is all about sexual innuendos and uh, her husband just died, but she couldn't care less. And so she's on a holiday. George asks her, are you on a vacation? No, darling, I'm on a holiday. Like... It's the same fucking thing, American English, British English. Just, you know, just go along with it. Let's ask her more about until last night. Why not? What happened? What happened to you last night? I was stricken, Mr. Sturbot. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. They couldn't really miss. <laughs> it was just as I'd always imagined it should be. Good one. The intimacy of candlelight. Romantic music tinkling across the room. And then, a stranger's glance. Those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. He was the man I'd been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. He's dead. I think it was Merlin. We find out, like, if we, uh, before we tell her about Merlin or Khan, I think she would have told us it was uh, Merlin she was fell in love with at the spot. Yeah, that was a really good joke about the Cupid's arrow hitting her bosom. <laughs> George is great. His de yeah, deadpan delivery and just some of the, it's just a fantastic performance. There's not really another performance in a video game like that that I can think of. That I really just like admire, like yeah, this the sense of humor and just like yeah, Rolf Saxon, it's a fantastic actor. Anyway, so let's tell her, uh, show her the manuscript. This is what Merlin was so keen to hide. Really? Well, that fuss for a sample of wallpaper. It's some kind of manuscript, and it looks to be very old. If I was you, I'd keep it well out of sight until you're clear of this place. That's exactly what I was thinking. I could roll it up and put it down my pants. No, no, that wouldn't do at all. You'd attract far too much attention. See, see, he's giving you hints there. That would, uh, yeah. They, I mean, they will obviously search you, and but yeah, she's giving I you hints. I have to go, ma'am. You need to, you need to hide it or get rid of it somehow. Without, yeah, without being detected with it or something. So wait, this guy has been new, just reading the newspaper like uh, like he's nothing better to do. Let's uh, observe him a little bit. I recognize the guy. Oh. It was the Nobel Prize winner from the country whose name I couldn't pronounce. Really? So that's the guy in the newspaper from some unpronounceable European state. Well, we can uh, talk to him. Let's see. Excuse me. Didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm, he doesn't know what we're talking about? Let's see, we can ask him about Plantar and the Clown. Let's ask about Plantar. Do you know a guy called Plantau? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of dead to last me a lifetime. <laughs> I'm uh, sure you have. He's really uh, 
He was quick to say he doesn't know anyone in Paris. Okay, well, what about the clown? Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. <laughs> Marx and Spencer. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. <laughs> Quite the oppression. I wonder which country he's supposed to be from. Kind of, isn't his accent tad Romanian? Could be that. But Romania is not really that unpronounceable. Maybe it's from Moldova? I don't know. That piano will, uh, won't stop. Anyways, uh, what about if you show the picture of Khan? Or Thomas Merlin? Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Why do you carry his photograph? I'm a private detective. He knows him. All of a sudden we have the option to ask him about Khan. What's your interest in Khan? He is an enemy of my people. You know he's a killer? Of course, amongst other things. Interesting. Let's ask him more about Khan. Is his enemy? Would you help me investigate Khan? That is not possible. My instructions are to observe. I cannot jeopardize my position as an honored guest of this country's government. If you're an honor, uh, if you're a guest of this country's government, then you should know someone in Paris. He said, "I don't know anyone in Paris." When he asked me about Plantar, what about the manuscript? Uh, does he? That was uh, Khan had the manuscript. Does he know? About Have you that? ever seen this old manuscript before? You know what it is, don't you? You are in great danger. Ooh. Put the manuscript back and leave here. What's going on? I can say no more. All right, so now we got a clear hint from this guy that he knows the manuscript and he said, you are in great danger. Put it away and just get out of here. So he knows. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. He knows a lot. Although we don't get any more other options to ask him about, but that was our hint. So what are we going to do? Let's go up to the staircase because I've had enough with that music now. I was trying to have a conversation. God damn it. Stop playing that piano. Right. We still have the keys, which means we can still go to the room 21. And, um... What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We need to get outside, but... Those thugs will search us and uh, get the manuscript and then... Uh, make us sleep with the fishes. George is sleeping with the fishes! My terrible Italian-American gangster accents. I'm no Viggo Mortensen. I cannot just have a great New York accent all of a sudden like that. So now we're outside again. I went outside the window where the we have that really short step. Let's see. What did uh, what did he say about the cobbles of the alleyway look very distant and very hard. Very distant, very hard. But they are there. We cannot obviously jump there. But what about the manuscript? It's another way to get it out of the building with them not seeing it. Let's find out what happens. I knew this was no way to treat an ancient manuscript. That is true. But I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. You know, I turned down the music like several times and it's still way too loud. Anyways, there it goes. He just threw out the manuscript out the window and it's now there. It was the rolled up manuscript waiting to be retrieved. Waiting to be, re be retrieved outside. Can we do it now? I figured it was best for me to return to the street before attempting to pick up the manuscript. Good point. I'm not going to try to pick it up from there because then I will de uh, definitely get killed. So let's go back inside the window and uh, let's now get outside the hotel and try to get to that alleyway as soon as possible before anyone else picks up the manuscript. Right, out of the hotel room, down the stairs. I'm trying to describe this as well uh, with for the uh, audio listeners. 
And he's still playing on the piano. So let's just get the hell out of here as soon as possible. I'm gonna try to at least go... Last time I kind of... Uh, uh, forgot I didn't have a timer. Oh wait, here come the thugs. Hold it right there. Alright. Search him again, Flat. They're gonna search me again. I just left the entrance of the hotel and here come the two uh, goons. Nothing, Guido. Okay, let him go. Nothing. George doesn't even say anything anymore. So, they were not able to find anything from me. Now let's just go behind the hotel real quick. Wait, before I do that, options, I just have to look. Volume. The music is at its lowest. Is it sound effects? One. Wait, 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 wait. Ah. Okay, okay. So now. Yeah. Done. Maybe I should turn up speeds a little bit. Wait, okay. I'll let sound effects a little bit lower again. And then speeds up a little bit like this. Sure, why not? Done. Uh, uh, I'm just uh, fixing the sound again. I feel like, like they're trying to say something and there's this really loud music. I know Barrington is a gr it's great. It's, it is. The music is great, but... It, for me to try to describe what's going on and uh, talk about the game and stuff like that while uh, it's so loud it's um, yeah it's a little bit uh, a little bit annoying <laughs> now we're behind the ho hotel and immediately George just goes straight to the manuscript if the manuscript was what Flap and Guido were after they were going to be disappointed <laughs> I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out couldn't wait and all of a sudden back in Nico's apartment we don't even have to go there by ourselves he's just got got he's he went you're by just himself. not going to believe what I've found you're not gonna believe it's it. not another part of the clown's costume is it much better and here the game kind of takes a weird turn but for the good in my mind it's a medieval manuscript medieval manuscript Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh yeah, maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. I have no idea if that's true. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. That's convenient. All right, now we get a video describing what happened about the Templars. This guy, named Hughes de Payen, hmm. arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. Okay. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim army. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Right. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and number. They were so rich, even kings came to them for loans. Wow. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Oh Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. But the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found. Oh. So it's the treasure map, maybe? About the Knights Templar? Jeez. So the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. 
But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Think about it, George. One guy's already died for it, as you said yourself. Besides, that parchment is fragile. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. You keep hold of it. And uh, George would have been the second one killed over it. Because uh, if we uh, had just waltzed out there without a... Uh, yeah without getting the manuscript outside the window, Guido Flav would have killed him. Anyways, so all of a sudden, we're now talking about the Knights Templars. And uh, we got, uh, I hope you, uh, the audience, uh, actually, I hope both uh, the people who are listening to the audio and people that are watching the video were able to get what Nico was talking about. It was basically a brief history of about the Knights Templars. But uh, I mean, uh, uh, her, once again, the uh, sound for the voice is not that loud compared to um, the music in the background. Maybe the music is in the foreground. <laughs> but uh, And there was no subtitles for some reason. But if you get the gist of it, they became uh, rich and uh, w wealthy kings came and uh, asked, uh, you know, they, they were basically protecting those uh, pilgrimage pilgrims that go into the uh, holy land and um like they grew in numbers got rich and um kings were asking them for a loan but then the was it the french king that uh, betrayed them then they were all sent to the inquisition burned and burned alive and you know what for heresy or whatever the um they were accused of and um but she said yeah there was a, this mis mysterious treasure that they had but that was never found so maybe the, this manuscript is some sort of a treasure map who knows but uh so all of a sudden we have these options right uh, we have the option to talk about the suitcase oh no sorry the briefcase wait l let's say i found plantow's briefcase yeah. in the killer's hotel room it was empty of course yeah that's yeah we that's really not worth saying i suppose but yeah it's most likely that the manuscript was in that briefcase and uh was uh, planter was probably going to show it to nico and talk about the templars and the funny thing now we actually because we talked to that guy from the uh, eastern europe he said khan is the enemy of my people which side is khan on Wh khan on <laughs> which side is khan on Yes, I said it correctly, but it just said, sounded like I said condom, <laughs> which is a Japanese girl's name. Never mind. And and a, a camera, by the way, <laughs> Canon. <laughs> All right, focus. So which side is he on and which side is Plantar on and which side is that guy on? We'll find out. So there's still we can still ask questions about the clown. Let's do that. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh, well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? What, what is up with the attitude, George? What are you doing? Like, I, I know you're doing what... If you only knew the uh, director's cut, then you would know what's going on. Then you wouldn't ask, you know, such a question. We're going to ask about Khan. Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. So, Yamada-san and the, uh, the Italian were both the pharmaceutical guy they were both in Paris what was it second week in July and so you say that yeah so that is quite the coincidence isn't it anyways uh, um, let's look at the manuscript then once again and see what we can find out more about it uh, or should we try to shake her hand we have still have the buzzer the guy at the novelty shop gave me this oh. what is it a hand buzzer you put it in your hand and give people electric shocks. Why? It's a gag. A practical joke. <laughs> if you ever use it on me, I'll break your arm. Okay, okay. I get the picture. Do not mess with her, George. She's going to give it to you. What about the matchbook? Would she know anything about it? I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. 
It's from the Club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. That's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh, well. I'll keep it as a souvenir. You should. You should keep it as a souvenir. Notice he doesn't really know of Club Alamut. Maybe it's not a club in Paris. Might be. Oh, yeah. Uh, his ID, Thomas Muller. I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. Never heard of him because he's con. Anyways, now let's find a look at the manuscript once again. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? <laughs> I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Oh. Huh. Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. He's worse. Far from it. Andre isn't the stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Kron Museum. I'll give you the address. Kron Museum. We got a new place that we can go to. But Lobino, let me tell you. Talk about a um, character that I dislike. <sighs> He's he represents everything that I. <laughs> Anyways, um, so now we have a. Uh, we're not now looking at Nico and uh, George in the apartment like uh, we have done so far when they're talking. And now we have this close up of the manuscript, and it seems pretty old. And uh, there's this big cross in the middle. And the this icon with the two guys on the horse, which is supposed to represent the Knights Templars, and then uh, each fra like so, th the cross is this really big white Templar cross, and we have four images at each, like, I mean, I guess yeah, each quarter of the of the manuscript. So in the top right, we have here a image of a bowl. And a man holding a sword, and there's a tripod in between them, and there's something on the tripod. It looks like a gem. So let's uh, talk about the that picture. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, <laughs> even if it was the bottom half. What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. Hmm. A tri gem, a tripod, and a bowl. What could it possibly mean? Now let's look at the one on uh, the top right one. There's a guy working on a loom. He's sewing something. And um, let's see what it says. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Hmm. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Oh. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. <laughs> famed for f ships and weaving. What could who what naval nation could that be? Let's find out. Uh well, later on in the game. But and then there uh, let's see. Bottom left there's a um, a knight holding something. Uh, it's it, it it appears it's round. And let's see what George says about it. A knight with a crystal ball. Crystal ball. There's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, hmm. but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin. Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Wow. Tell me that again. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There we find out. He studied law, he's a lawyer, and that's why he knows Latin, which is gonna be very helpful in this game, especially doing with medieval things. George, way to go picking the right language to learn. So, the knight, by my teachings, you will see the... What was it again? Let's listen. The knight scroll bears a phrase in Latin. 
Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. And uh, yeah, that's written on the scroll right next to the night. And um, you wonder what that's all about and what if it is, is what that crystal ball is. Well, anyways, now let's look at the image in the bottom uh, right corner, I suppose. Uh, yeah, the bottom right uh, part of the manuscript. And that's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror. But what is in that mirror? There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror. But the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid. Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't was... frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. <laughs> So, uh, George was a little wuss <laughs> if he thought that was scary. What cartoons did I think was really scary back in the day? I really don't, I can't really remember. It's not, not necessarily a movie. There was a TV show that freaked me out, a British one about fantasy based and stuff like that. About a mole man. I wish I knew what it was. A storyteller or something. That really freaked me out. Never mind. So she's looking at a reflection and it shows uh, it's a f f like with three h hideous faces. It's a weird reflection. What on earth could that mean? So these four different images, we have really no idea what it's all about at this point. But boy, will we find out. <laughs> so we looked at that manuscript. Her suggestion, go talk to Labino. Labino. At the Kuhn Museum and see if he knows something. Let's uh, leave the place then. Maybe I'll check out the Kuhn Museum. I'm sure you'll find it useful, George. Come on, come on, come on. Here comes the music cue. Oh. Out of the apartment. Let's head on and see if there's the old lady. She's still knitting. And, um, yeah, let's just get out of here as soon as possible and get to the Kuhn Museum. See what, um, see what we can find out about. I mean, it, it would be tempting to go to the police and tell them about everything that we have found out so far. We have some legit, uh, pretty logistic, logistic, that's not probably, I mean, we have really solid evidence about the killer but but uh i'll uh, you know you can always go to the police station whenever you want and now you can do it in your own time we'll and we will will go there eventually like um like uh what's his name the waiter in faulty towers damn it his name was uh manuel yeah Eventually. But now we're going to the museum croon. It looks pretty nice outside. Do we get a... Uh, can we look at anything? Well, there's an another house here nearby. There's a window there. I don't know what is in there. Let's find out. Through the grimy glass, I could see several large shapes in a gloomy room. What they were, I couldn't imagine. What, what is it for, this building? I considered smashing my fist through the pane, <laughs> wrenching open the window, and vaulting triumphantly into the building. <laughs> then I thought, no, that's dumb. Besides, I might get hurt. Why would we even want to go there? I mean, it's, it's not even part of the museum, is it? Nope. I don't think so. Let's just go through the uh, museum entrance here. It's a very interesting museum. So there are many different items around. There's this statue it here. It was a statue from ancient Egypt. Ancient Those Egypt. old civilizations sure could teach us a few things about art and beauty. That is the true. The statue didn't deserve to be mauled by a Philistine like me. <laughs> a nice looking statue. There are a lot of different things around here. There's this uh, security guard here. The attendant had an air of self-importance and the kind of steely eyes that never seem to blink. Attendant. Shall we talk to the Pardon attendant? Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Are you Labino? Oh, no. 
Fancy you mistaking me for him. No, I am the deputy custodian. But Labano does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Hmm. So he's not here. This is the only guy inside the museum, so Lopino's not here. We could ask him about the manuscript. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... <laughs> no, no, no! They assume I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Yeah, he, like, you can hear in his voice, just like you heard in my voice when Nico first mentioned Lobino. There's something not right with that guy. Does he know anything about the Knights Templars? Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. Is that a saying? Not a sausage? I've never heard that one before. Has he ever seen Khan? Let's look. Uh, show him the picture of Khan. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. Is there any reason why I should? I guess not. Hmm. You've never seen him Thanks before. Thanks for your help. All right. Let's look at more. Uh, there are some cases here we can look at. Let's see. The case contains some fragments of pottery. They pottery. look to me like broken flower pots. Above them, a sign read, L'Age Paleolithique. Hmm. I tried to sneak my hand inside while the guard wasn't looking, but the case was locked. Hmm. Why would you want to do that, though? That's the case stealing? contained two rows of silver coins. Some Each coins. coin on the lower row showed a portrait of a guy with a huge nose. Weird coins? I tried to raise the glass cover of the case, but it didn't budge. Didn't budge. Let's see what's over here. I looked down at a collection of tools with wooden handles and tarnished metal blades. There were knives, chisels, and spikes fanned out in a semicircle. I guess there's always been a need for home improvement. I tried to sneak my hand inside while the guard wasn't looking, but the case was locked. They're all locked. Why are we trying to <laughs> steal random museum things? It was a large brass urn. There's a large brass urn here in the, in the corner. What's this totem The totem here? pole looked distinctly out of place in the setting of the museum. It kind of does, yeah. This is all, all, all of a sudden there's a totem pole, like a Native American no, totem pole inside a museum that mainly has e things from Egypt and medieval times. Let's see. What happens if I go close to the totem pole? Watch out! You will have that done on top of us! The security guy, he just yelled at us. Watch out, do not touch that. What do we have over here? What's this? It was an ancient Egyptian sarcophagus with a beautifully painted effigy of its owner on the lid. Wow. So, what can we do with the sarcophagus? Sarcophagus. Hold on. I can't even talk. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. <laughs> closet. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. Sarcophagus. And he called it a closet. <laughs> What's that it over was there? a stone carving from ancient Egypt. Stone carving from ancient Egypt. Can we do something like that? I was no desecrator of tombs. <laughs> so there are many different things. But there's one obvious thing here in the middle. I've been stalling it. Obviously, you've seen it now. It's right at the center of the museum. And now, let's go look at it. Boy, it sure looks familiar, doesn't it? In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. Did he say tripod? It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. Hell yeah. A notice yeah. identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! What's that? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. So all of a sudden we find a tripod that was found in Ireland, Western Ireland, at a uh, dig site that is related to the uh, Knights Templar. What happens if we try to take the eye? Hey, no! <laughs> no, monsieur! No! 
What's wrong? You must not enter the exhibit. I'm sorry. Trying to steal a tribe, but so we're not going to be able to do that. Not with that guy around there. But we sure got quite the information now about the tripod being found and discovered in Ireland. So all of a sudden we found the first thing that's in the manuscript. The tripod was definitely the one on the manuscript. The temporal connection confirmed it. I was tempted to go to Ireland to check it out. What? Are we going to leave Paris? We're going to leave France? We're going to go to Ireland? Because we just found this tripod? Apparently so. George is set on it. He wants to go to Ireland. Now, in this game, the original, here you have all of a sudden the uh, option of Aeroport. Is that how you pronounce it in French? It's, it's, ob it's obviously an airport, right? Um, it's not even an option in the director's cut anymore. But, yeah, you can just go straight to Ireland without even telling Nico anything. But since... Um, since it's no longer an option in the uh, the director's cut, you have to first go to Nico, uh, to her place, uh, at Rougiari. I'm gonna do that, and s and you can see why. Because we could. Uh, there's nothing wrong with going straight to Ireland and just continue the game over there, obviously. But it's good to let her know th that you're going to Ireland because you will get some extra information. And in the director's cut, you will not be able to go to Ireland straight away without going to Nico to get this extra information. So, but yeah, in this case, in the original, you were able to go straight to Ireland. Hi, George. I like that she smiles. You can see her smile every time she sees George coming in the door. We're such a nice couple. I found the tripod. Where? In the museum. It belonged to the Templars. It was dug up in Ireland at a place called Loch Marne. I have heard of Lochman. Oh. I read an article about the castle. Take a look for yourself. She, she knows about Lochman. A popular gossip magazine. You read that rubbish? No, I write it. <laughs> it's like in uh, that John Candy movie. He wrote a uh, soap opera. Professor Nigel Pegram. Nigel Excavating Pegram. the medieval castle at Loch Marne. Right. That's strange. What? He resigned his chair at Durham University in order to devote his time to the excavation. Not only that, but he cancelled the filming of a fourth series of his popular television program. Okay. This site at Loch Marne must be awful important to him. He's a professor of history. They're all cuckoo. <laughs> all the same, I'd like to talk to this Professor Pegram. How do you feel about a trip to Ireland? Disappointed. Huh? Hmm? That I won't be going. I want to follow up the Belotta case. Hmm. If you really think Pegram's dam is important, why don't you visit Loch Marne? On my own? I'm not so sure about that. Where is Ireland exactly? So, we could have gone to Ireland without knowing anything about this Professor Pegram, but because we went to Nico, we got information about Loch Marne. Uh, I don't think Loch Marne really exists. I was trying to look for it on a map once, but I don't know. Maybe maybe there is a place called Loch Marne. Let's ask more about the Professor Pegram. What do you know about Professor Pegram? I've seen a television program, Pegram's Past. He's written a book. The Crusader Families of Ireland. I'll bet he'd be interested in the manuscript. All right. So the guy was at a, uh, was at a university, and he I'll had see you later. Okay. Keep me informed if you find anything new. I'm just leaving the apartment. Um, yeah. So he had his own TV show, and he was working. Uh, he was at a uh, university, and he resigned from the university and stopped filming a. Uh, a TV series that he was doing, a popular TV show, because he dedicated his work to this excavation in Ireland. And notice they talked about Pegram's gem, that he found a gem. Hold on. Tripod, gem, that's basically the first two, I that those items are on, uh, on one of the first clues in the manuscript. So now we have even bet more information to um, use when we're in Ireland. So, like I said, 
in in the original game, you can just go straight to Ireland without knowing about Pikram, and you will find more about Pikram there at the spot. But in the director's cut, you cannot even go to Ireland without getting this information first from Nico. So, without further ado, it is time to finally. In the f this is the first time in the game where we're leaving Paris, we're leaving the country, and we're going to Ireland to a place called Lochmarn. So here we all, all of a sudden we have a bigger, much bigger map of Europe. There are these uh, interesting uh, pictures of uh, different countries: Spain, France, UK, Germany, Poland, Russia, Turkey, Greece, Italy. But none of them. We're not. We're not going to any of these countries. We're going here to the island. The what is it? The Emerald Isle? Or I can't. I, I really hope I'm. Oh, wow, look at that. Nice looking castle, a green bus. Stepping at the bus, nice Irish music there in the background. Several hours later, I arrived in Ireland, the Emerald Isle. The Emerald Isle? I'd been lucky to get a bus from Dublin to the tiny village of Loch Marn. On the way out, the driver told me there was only one service a day. One service a day. So all of a sudden, we are in Ireland in a place called Loch Marn. And we're right, we're right outside a bar here, or a lounge. Is it? Is it a lounge? Mac. Davids. Davids. Mac Davids food. There's a menu here. So look at the menu. The menu was limited. It read, "No food today." <laughs> I didn't care. I'd lost my appetite somewhere over the Irish Sea. <laughs> Probably not. Bad food in the. Airplane he was riding. No, nothing to do. Uh, we're just gonna. Shall we go straight into the bar? Or there's a kid here outside the bar whistling. Can you hear his whistling tune? There's also something down here. What's it was this? a trap door in the sidewalk. Mm. Can we open this trap door? I tugged at the trap door, but it was locked from the inside. Hmm. A trapdoor is not going to get opened up that easily. So we can go right s straight inside this bar here, or we can talk to this kid who's hanging outside. Let's look at him. The lad was doing his best to express his adolescent aggression. <laughs> his effort was somewhat diminished by the fringe of milk on his lightly feathered upper lip. Ah, <laughs> I see. So it's probably not, I mean, ad like adolescent kid, like what? what's his name? Uh... Oh God, uh, Huckleberry, 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 Huckleberry Finn. I'm not gonna even try. I can't remember anything. Let's just talk to him. There's this kid with a cap. Hi there. Outside the bar. What? What's your name, what? kid? What? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? So uh, we have the option to say we're uh, George, and we also have the option to say we're. Inspector Rousseau. But, like I said at the beginning uh, of this uh, walkthrough and review, let's just be truthful. Truthful George. Tell him who we are. I'm George Stobart, and I'm with the good guys. You're a head case, mister. A few sandwiches short of a picnic. Cut the crap and tell me your name. <laughs> Liam McGuire. McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run from me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks every last penny down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother, bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I, see what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. <laughs> Compared to him, 
Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for Altar Boy of the Year. Huckleberry Finn, that's the one. Huckleberry Finn. So, um, yeah, this is kind of... He, he seems a little bit dubious. Uh, not... Doesn't seem like he's telling us all the truth there. But, you know, it's Ireland. Who knows? But... <laughs> Let's see now. We can ask him about a lot of things. We can ask him about the castle. We can ask him about the clown. That probably doesn't make sense. I'm not sure if the clown is going to show up here in a clown costume. But uh, we can also ask about Professor Pegram, which would not have been an option if we would have just gone straight to Ireland without talking to Nico. So why not use this uh, option about Pegram? Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? <laughs> He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. I know the man. Okay. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now. But if I seize him, I'll ask him. If I seize him. Is that really an Irish thing? I'm not going to question it. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons. Like in the films. Hmm. So all of a sudden, uh, uh, the option is now not Pegram, but the dig. We have a shovel icon here, so... Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. <laughs> I can still ask about the dig. Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Marne would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. What does this Fitzgerald guy look like? Big head, big ears, and face irons. What? You know, <laughs> specky tackles, glasses. He's blind as a bat without him. <laughs> it's quite the description of someone who's wearing glasses, but okay. Sean Fitzgerald. Sean! It's the only one local. I'm not going to try an Irish accent. Although a weird thing happened once at uh, a place that I work. A British guy said, oh, I could have sworn sometimes your accent is like Irish. And I'm like, wait, what? There's not a, not a hint of Irish. Is there? No, no, no. <laughs> we can ask about the castle. What can you tell me about the castle, Maguire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No. It's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. Only... What? Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. He won't tell us something about the castle? Let's press on. You know something about the castle. You're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. Let's ask about the castle again, then, if you're not sc so scared to talk about it. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh. There's a ghost. It's called the Phantom of Loch Man. The Phantom of Loch Man? So now the option is we can ask about this ghost. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. Last I just Tuesday. reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Hmm. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but my legs had lost their stuffing. Hmm. I see. We could still ask about the ghost? Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on my ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then 
I hears this spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. Yeesh. I need to look around me. I'm kind of getting shivers listening to this. And the music. Let's ask more about the ghost. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. So, we got a haunted castle. We can ask about the clown, but uh, probably he knows nothing about it. Let's ask. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne, they all dress like clowns. <laughs> the man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. There's this clown, see? And he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff, only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. Yeesh. My God, that doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're not a day over 14. Oh no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, he's uh, he can be full of it. Let's see if he uh, if he shows him the picture of Khan. Does he know him? Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy character. No, I never seed him. Seed him. It's a very interesting word he's using. All right. Ah, shall we shake his hand with the buzzer? Give me your hand. Get lost. Oh, come on. I just want to show you a little trick. No way, mister. I don't do tricks. Father Mahoney told me I'd burn in hell if I did. <laughs> I just want to shake your hand, that's all. Oh, all right. Oh, we got him. Gotcha. Neat, huh? Didn't feel a thing. Really? The expression... <laughs> his expression the, would indicate something else. All right, so we are not able to get anything else out of him. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. For now, but... We... Um... Let's see. Um... Bu -bu -bu -bum. We are now in Ireland, and I think... We've just arrived in Ireland. I think I'll just stop part three, the episode three, I suppose. I'm calling these episodes. I'll end episode three here because I want to kind of have a special episode for the entire Ireland experience. And we just arrived and just talked to the kid. And we kind of, uh, we we got some information to start with. The uh, the castle is haunted, according to this kid, who's not, although he uh, he's not being totally honest with us, I think. Especially about being a father with kids. That's just out of the picture. And um, then there, uh, we got a name. The, the one local man who he saw work for Professor Pre uh, Pegram at this dig at the castle. His name was Sean Fitzgerald. And he's wearing glasses. And that's it. We are outside a bar. We can go inside the bar. Then there's also a passage here that leads probably to the castle. Most likely. But I'm, I'm going to just save here jlr podcast network real quick save all right that's been saved so right double check there's nothing wrong with double saving just to be sure <laughs> all right so next time i will continue this uh, walkthrough and review and uh, uh, yeah the next episode episode four will be dedicated to everything that happens here in ireland Oh, it will be exciting. And yeah, you thought the story took quite the turn there with that manuscript about Knights Templars. Wait until you see what's going to happen here in Ireland. And then on from that. I, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, video here on YouTube. Or the uh, an audio on uh, one, of the, uh, one of the podcast sites. And, um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna, um, there's nothing much else to say un until next, uh, well, yeah, until next time. I hope you've enjoyed it and, uh, stay tuned for more, uh, episodes in the future. Like I said, episode four will be the Irish episode. I shall talk with an Irish accent, yeah. 
Why am I doing impersonation? I, I'm, I'm awful at this. My test, Jesse Ventura was just terrible. It's a mass conspiracy. That clown is the obvious killer of... He was the penguin. He was the snowman. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I already knew it was a bad impersonation and I still did it. I'm a complete fool. <laughs> but this fool will continue until next time. You guys take care. See ya. Bye bye.